everyone, my name is Maria, and I, I was struggling to figure out what kind of video I want to make, um, because there's so many exercise videos out there now. I mean, people are just so eager to help, and there's so many wonderful videos on YouTube and Instagram. I wanted to contribute something a little bit different. Um, I want to talk about a topic that um, doesn't get discussed nearly enough, and that topic is sleep. I mean, we talk about nutrition, we argue about nutrition, um, but I'm not sure that anybody would argue that the importance of sleep. And the reason I chose this topic is because it's near and dear to my heart. I struggled with insomnia for many years. And I, I just, you know, I, for a while, for, for, for years actually, I, I came to accept it as like some kind of a normal thing that it's, you know, it's normal to sleep four hours one night, five hours the next night, and get up and work 12 hours and go work out at night. And I threw myself into such a tailspin. You know, I'm still recovering from that. So my, my understanding of the importance of sleep came very slowly over time. Um, I have a, a tiny bit of that type A personality, not too much. And so I just kept going and going and going until I really crashed. And that's when I had to learn to do things a little bit differently. So what my hope is with this talk, um, it's not really a discussion, I guess because it's just me talking, um, is that somebody will hear me and um, take something from this and it will change their life. That's my hope. I feel very uncomfortable talking in front of the camera, in case you haven't noticed. I have no problem moving in front of the camera, but sitting still and talking is very difficult, so bear with me. So, sleep is extremely important for like a million reasons, but I'm going to try to keep it short. Uh, sleep is important for hormonal health. And when I talk about hormones, I'm not talking about like, you know, like women's health hormones. We all have hormones, men, women, we all have them. And hormones regulate just about everything in our bodies. That includes hunger signals, cravings, growth, like muscle growth, um, cognitive stuff. So, you know, memory, learning, like you name it, it's controlled by hormones. When you don't get enough sleep, you're throwing that delicate balance out of whack. And you know, if this happens for a night or two, or maybe you just have like a bad month, eh, you'll probably recover. But if you just keep this up day after day, month after month, year after year, you will burn out and it'll show up as all sorts of different things. It can be depression, anxiety, obesity, just weakness, chronic fatigue, um, just you name it, it can be caused by lack of sleep. So how do we fix the problem of sleep? I'm just going to go through um, some bullet points of the things that have worked for me. So in order to get quality sleep, you really have to develop a bedtime routine. The bedtime routine might look a little bit different for everybody, but there are some general rules. It's generally best not to look at your phone or your laptop or any electronics really, even TV, two hours prior to bedtime. Uh, about two hours prior to your planned sleep time, Turn off all electronics. If you absolutely have to look at a computer or a phone, get yourself some blue light blocking glasses. They're really cheap online. They're like 10 or $20. And wear those to block out some of that light that's like stimulating your brain to stay awake. It has to do with melatonin. Melatonin is kind of, you can think of it as a sleep hormone. Um, and these, the lights that are emitted from all these electronics um, disrupt that hormonal balance. So 
you want to try to avoid exercising late at night. I, I mean, I know there are some people that say exercising at night actually helps them fall asleep, and that can be true as well. Um, but I experience um, an elevated energy level from exercise, especially weightlifting. Weightlifting in the morning just makes me over the top full of energy. So I have to be careful doing any kind of strength training in the afternoon. Limit your sugar intake. I would love to see people just not eat any sugar ever, but that, that's just me and I know that's not realistic for most people. Try to limit your sugar intake. And by sugar, I don't just mean like table sugar. I mean like juices, fruits, uh, pasta, bread. Yes, those are, those are sugars. They're carbohydrates. So anything that is a carbohydrate source, try to just limit it in the afternoon. Um, try to eat dinner earlier so that you're not falling asleep and a completely full stomach. That can also disrupt sleep. Keep your room as dark as possible. I have blackout curtains in my bedroom. Um, and even the blackout curtains are sometimes not enough. So I also have uh, Roman shades underneath. Keep the noise out as much as possible. So if you're fortunate to have a really quiet room, that's awesome. But that's really hard to do in the city to have such a quiet room. So um, another suggestion that I have to block out noise is this dome noise machine. This, this is actually a noise machine. Yeah, it makes white noise. Um, it is spelled D-O-H-M. And you can get it online for like 20 to $30. So, White noise does two things. White noise will block out all the sounds outside the room, and also white noise can kind of lull the, your mind. It, it lulls you to sleep. Um, I have recommended this to a lot of people, and they say it, it's just magical, the, this little gadget right here. Um, there, but there are, there are always exceptions. Some people get really irritated about white noise, so you just have to experiment for yourself. Um, so back to the bedtime routine. So my bedtime routine is usually reading a book um, or taking an Epsom salt bath. Um, Epsom salt bath can be particularly helpful because Epsom salt is basically magnesium. And so when you sit in a tub with warm water and Epsom salt, your skin absorbs the magnesium. And magnesium is, has a very relaxing effect on the body. It helps relax the muscles. It can help with it helps with aches and pains. Um, so you want to sit in, in a warm tub with like two cups of Epsom salt for like twenty to thirty minutes. That's like the recommended time for this stuff to kind of absorb a little bit into your body. Um, the time in the tub is also a great time to meditate. So whatever meditation technique you like to use, that's like a good time to use it. Um, I, I really just like to hang out quietly in the tub, close my eyes, and meditate without any, um, I don't like to use any apps, but I know that some people like to use meditation apps, and that's great too. Um, to look at my notes. So another little trick I use is essential oils. Essential oils have become very, very popular. You can find them pretty much anywhere. Um, I like to use ylang ylang and Roman chamomile. Um, there's nothing, there's nothing special about these brands, but here I'm gonna, I'm gonna show them. I just got these. I got these at Mom's because I was grocery shopping, and it's super convenient. So I don't like to use lavender all the time, although lavender is, is awesome and it's very relaxing. Um, th there's some research out there that shows a lavender can be estrogenic, uh, and that means it kind of causes your body to produce a little bit more estrogen, and it might not be such a good thing for everybody. So I've been kind of trying to stay away from lavender a little bit, even though I love it. Well, also, 
this is this is the last bit of um, advice keep your sleep schedule regular so you're trying to fall asleep before 11 o'clock and you want to do the same thing every night so whether you decide that your sleep time is nine o'clock or ten o'clock keep it the same every single day the body doesn't like to be jerked around too much the body does like a certain rhythm over time so if you're falling asleep and waking up at all sorts of different times it is too much stress on the body and it's not the kind of stress you want to put on your body so I think that's all the things for now in regards to sleep. I hope this video helps somebody out there. Uh, if you have any questions, you can well, you can you can reach me on Instagram. Um, I think my contact information is probably on the Mission Fit website. And I want to thank you for listening to this. And I hope it helps. Good luck.